Okay, so this is the list of what we're going to do today. First, uh, we're going to um, create a slit distribution, and I'll, uh, we'll look very quickly at this um, Python script. All it does is you're, we're going to do this in geographic coordinates. We're going to compute a Gaussian slit distribution in geographic coordinates. We're going to um, put this onto a grid of points, so that'll be our simple grid database. And then that's going to, uh, to drive our um, slow slip inversion. Also, what the script will do is give us a temporal database where we're going to have a very simple time evolution of the slip amplitude. Then we'll run that example. And after we've run it, then we can um, create our synthetic observations, just adding noise to, those, uh, to that forward model results. And then after we do that, we will uh, create our greens function. So this is divided into two parts. The step 07a, let's see, I believe that's the left lateral. So those are our left lateral impulses. And then step 07b will be our updip impulses. And then we have a Python script that will take those impulses, it will combine them into a specified rake angle. So we'll get have just a, combine them into a single uh, impulse. It will then uh, take read our synthetic data that we've generated and it'll perform a very simple uh, linear inversion and I'll talk about that a little bit later. And then after we've run our inversion, we're going to visualize the inversion results. Uh, this is just going to plot your um, penalty, penalty misfit versus your weighted data misfit. Uh, it'll do a log-log plot. <laughs> Okay, so once we've uh, run our um, synthetic um, forward model, this is the kind of thing that we'll have. So I think what I'll do is I'll just start doing that now. So the first thing we do, let's see, this one's easier to, um, so we're going to, first of all, just uh, make synthetic GPS displacements and we do that with this simple Python script, which is now, ah, it got too um, big. Anyway, I'm not gonna go through this in detail, but the different parts of it, we, we just make a grid, so we make a regular grid of points. We're gonna compute our Gaussian uh, function, so you'll notice later on that it's not symmetrical because we're dealing with geographic coordinates. And then we make use of the Python interface to uh, spatial data to write our uh, spatial database that will give us our fault slip. And then finally, at the end, we'll write our temporal database, which just gives us, uh, so you can have a look at this script yourself and play with it if you want. So we do that. Oh, the parameters for this are contained in this uh, config file right here, so you can just look very brief, briefly at that. So not many parameters, it's just uh, where it's getting um, um, Oh wait, ah, I got ahead of myself. No, I'm, it's Yeah, this one um, It's the uh, slow slip one is the one we were looking at. So uh, we have our slip center, we have our slip radius, uh, maximum amount of slip. These are just your Gaussian parameters. And this is the range that you're uh, creating your grid. And then a, a file name for your temporal database, times where you want to uh, specify it, the amplitudes at those times, what your units are and then coordinate system information. So we run that. Okay, so what that did, uh, it created um, these two databases. It first, we'll look at the time database because it's easier. Okay, it's about as basic as you can get. So it's just time, what we know, we see what the units are, which is day. We have seven points and then just amplitudes at those times. 
Then we have the uh, spatial database. Okay, so you'll see this is rather than just your simple DB, this is a simple grid DB. So you have to give it number of points in the X, Y, and Z directions. So this is really just a 2D uh, database, so it's just one layer of points. And then you'll give it the set of X coordinates, uh, and then your Y coordinates, and then we just have the uh, single Z coordinate. And then it's just your uh, X, Y, Z, and then these are your uh, slip components, which are listed up uh, right here. Okay. Oh, the one thing I so um, we have. Um, I'll look. Uh, so we'll just look at our um, config file. So the things that we're going to need are our regular pilot app dot config this file, which is step 06, we're going to use just elastic properties. We're going to use the field split solver because we have a fault in here. We've already done this step, generated our databases. Um, we're going to run it for 30 days with a time step of two days. Uh, we're just going to uh, procrastinate uh, specify slip on the slab fault patch. We're going to call it slab. Um, this is fault cohesive kinetic. So these are the labels that we defined. These are our node set names. So the uh, fault slab top patch and then the edge of it. Uh, this is just our quadrature stuff. We're going to, and here we're going to specify the type of um, Rupture is a time history slip function. This is one of several types of uh, time uh, dependent slip that you can specify in uh, PyLith. So once we've done that, we're going to give it the, uh, the slip spatial database, which is a simple grid database. And we're just giving it the name Gaussian slip. We give it the file name. We're going to do uh, linear interpolation. And then uh, we're going to just, we're going to initiate uh, the slip all at the same time. So we just use a uniform DB for that. And one of the, uh, I believe, suggested user exercises is to do something different for this. You could have a time variation in the slip initiation time to make a more interesting <laughs> slow slip event. Uh, then for our, um, Slip amplitude, this is our temporal database here. And then we just have our output. So we're going to give it the regular uh, components, the direction, as well as the final amount of slip. Okay, then just our regular output. Now the one new part, this C, uh, continuous, we're gonna say that these are synthetic continuous GPS sites. So that is, output solution points. That's a different type of output. So if you come down, this stuff is all standard until we get to the CGPS part. So here, um, that's our output file name, but it also has to know where these points are. So that's contained in this CGPS sites.txt file. And we can look briefly at that. It's very simple. It just gives coordinates and station names. And then you also have to give it the coordinate system information for that file. So we're using um, uh, geographic coordinates. And then we just have our regular material output. So this is what your um, site file looks like. It's real big. These are obviously not real stations, but uh, station name, longitude, latitude, and um, Z. The reason I give it minus one is that every now and then, uh, 
pilot, if you give it exactly zero, pilot can have trouble interpolating that point to um, within the mesh. It'll sometimes think that a point is outside the mesh just because of round off. So you put it one meter below the ground surface and you're good. Okay, so I believe that's pretty much all we need to, to run this one. Um, so we'll just, we'll go ahead and run it. So let's see, 30 days to, so this will be 15 time steps. <laughs> Okay, while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and open up Paraview. See if it finished yet. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, <coughs> So um, one of the things you can also do in Paraview is save the state from a previous uh, session and um, then load that state later. But the Python is better because this is more fragile. It doesn't always translate well uh, from different versions, but I just did it just this minute. So, um, so anyway, what we have, it doesn't look like much, but these black dots are our um, synthetic GPS sites. And then, so we start applying our slip. I'll just, I'll just play the whole thing. Okay, so it's not too exciting. It's not, most slow slip events would move around, right? But this one, all we've done is give it the Gaussian slip distribution and then modify that, uh, the amplitude of that distribution with time. So to make it more interesting, you would change the, uh, the initiation time of, of where it started. So that's our forward model. So using that forward model, what we then want to do, let's see if I have anything about this in the presentation. Nope, not yet. We want to make a synthetic uh, GPS um, observations out of, out of that forward model. So. We just uh, do a very simple Python script, add some random noise that's based on what you've told it in this config file. <coughs> okay, we just, uh, you give it uh, where your solution file is, uh, tell it which time step you want to look at, and then you uh, just give it the uncertainties. And I believe I've, I've been fairly um, optimistic with data uncertainties. This would be something else for users to play with. But then we just make our synthetic data. And so what that did, it just created um, these will be used for our inversion. So we uh, give it the station name, X, Y, Z coordinates. These are now in our uh, projected coordinate system. Uh, our displacement components, uh, and then what the uncertainties were that we assigned. So 